February 30th, 2030 was the day I married the love of my life. We had two beautiful daughters, Marceline and Clementine. On our 50th anniversary, I took my wife to the park bench where we first met. I put my hand on her soft cheek and gazed into her deep chocolate eyes. Closing mine, I leaned in to kiss her under the sunset. At that moment, I thought I had everything I wanted. I was happy. <sighs> Alas, the alarms had opened my eyes at midnight. My head hurt as I was trying to figure out where my wife disappeared. I turned off the lights and realized she had never existed. Everything was a lie. 18, alone and angry, I pressed my face on her pillow and screamed my lungs out. Patience ran dry as a list of frustrations piled up. The fluttering moth was clung to the only light in my apartment, and my hope dimmed with a silent darkness. In desperate times like these, I crawled back to sleep to continue where I left off. But the dream had dissipated. It was too late. The only source of joy left was to spend the rest of my pitiful night binging YouTube videos. <laughs> it was a waste of time. I could have done something great. I, I knew that. But, but my laziness preferred to suppress my pain. <laughs> I have a confession. Most of my life, I was an internet addict resorting to anything digital for relief including video games, social media, porn, meme, a little bit of everything all of the time. And I'm not proud of it. Hence, I can tell you that running away from your problems will only do more damage than it ever tried to solve. Because escapism has never made me truly happy. With COVID-19 promoting social distancing, more people start relying on various coping mechanisms to keep their inner demons at bay. Life isn't easy anymore and it's the truth, the harsh reality we all have to face when our fantasies fail to master it. But today, I'm going to talk about why we escape from reality, what it leads to, and how to, ironically, escape from escapism. First, I need you to answer me this. When was the last time you turned on your phone and blinded your sorrows with shiny pixels? I was the couch potato too. <laughs> Laziness is a side effect of efficiency. Our brains use mental shortcuts called heuristics to make quick judgment based on what we've learned previously and what we love. <laughs> These heuristics go haywire when we use social media we see what we want to see and we hear what we want to hear. Efficient, right? Well, this unconscious filter leads us to a path of least resistance where we feel safe, secure, and familiar. <laughs> Thus, it isn't a surprise that a study in, in 2001 states that we watch TV to prevent ourselves from thinking about our problems. We're tired after a long day and we opt out for mm, one episode. <laughs> no, 
one more season <laughs> now one more show down the rabbit hole called addiction and where does that lead us to answer that let us go to a civilization full of color and wonder walking on the streets of tokyo you can see neon advertisements promising to ease your pain as unhealthy work culture and societal pressure strangle the japanese's will to live a generation of hermits secluded from society called the hikikimori are born Takuya Ishikawa is one of them. In a documentary about the Hikikimori, the 40-year-old man said that he wanted to be filmed so that there would be proof of his existence. And I will never forget those words. While drifting off to another plane, he lost himself, the very essence which made him real. Whether he was alive or dead, it made no difference. And sadly, there are millions like him out there, but they were never filmed. Like this man. <laughs> what? You don't, you don't see him? <laughs> well, do you notice the black spot on the floor that is an imprint of dried blood stains where the hikikimori took his last breath alone with maggot shells and dead flies littering the room he was found 10 days after his death not because someone was worried about him but because the stench became a nuisance to the neighbors and no one wants to remember filth. If someone remembered them like Takuya, their image would only be distorted, rotten by wasted potential. If this goes on, the world is in danger of a new age of hikikimori an escapist pandemic already seen in Japan. To avoid this fate, I have a few suggestions on how to return to reality. Like any monk would say, you have to look inward to the core that drives all your actions. In the, 20, in the 2006 Harvard Business Review, Neuroscientists scanned the brain and concluded that we can't make decisions without emotion. It makes sense because we wouldn't buy candy knowing it's bad for our health if it didn't feel good. Skipping classes is exhilarating. Even though rationally, it's bad for our future. So, by amplifying our desire, the feel-good chemicals will motivate us to solve all our problems. But what if it isn't enough? <laughs> you see, people who abstain from sugar don't do it because they want to lose fat. They do it because they fear that five years down the line, they'll get diabetes. Treatment will cost them an arm and a leg and no one, no one will love them because of their hideous bodies. But don't let that frighten you. <laughs> Dr. Alokanov, a psychiatrist, said that fear is our friend. The unsung hero whose purpose is to warn us of danger so that we can do something about it. 
and vets. How successful people win at life. The best students spend countless hours in the library instead of partying because they fear becoming disappointment to their families. The best business people keep track of the market demand because they fear bankruptcy and public humiliation. The best parents give the most love and attention because they fear losing the trust of their children. Now, do you see the power of fear and desire? By amplifying one, you empower the other. And choosing what to fear will be the key to overcoming escapism. So let's go full circle where we first started. It wasn't the first time I had that dream. I've been a family man thousands of times already. Do you know what it's like to live a lifetime of joy only to be yanked? back to reality over and over again it's heartbreaking no matter how much you try to escape there will be nights where you're forced to confront all your insecurities and reflect on how miserable you are the world is a grim place and if I give you hope by telling you that you can be do anything if you believe in yourself. And that's the same as escapism, hiding the dreadful truth. If you want to be proud of yourself, you can't do that if you let your monkey brain use heuristics to be efficient. If you want st to stop procrastinating, and be proud of yourself. <laughs> Recall these two people. Because I want you to be frightened by their tragic fear, fates, regretful loneliness. Desire and fear will be the yin and yang to your conquest and define who you are. As a parting gift to this conclusion, I bestow to you this nightmare so that you could realize the life you've always dreamed of. You're welcome. <laughs>